Do you know do you know personally Elton John? I've met him, yes. It's, several it's, times. Several times because he's so involved in photography, right? Absolutely. Yeah, he's he's known as a uh an a, a, an amazing collector. He's been collecting since the early 1990s um when he uh when he first moved to Atlanta. Uh, which is uh, kind of the impetus behind this uh, this auction, which I know we'll talk about. But yes, he's been collecting since the early 1990s and um, is, as you may know, is going to be opening um, an exhibition from his collection uh, at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London in how May. How many photos? Do you know? I don't know exactly how many works are in that um, in that exhibition, but he he his collection is over 7,000 items. I read in the catalog of the Tate exhibitions that it was 8,000 and, and the director of the museum at that time said it was one of the most important collection of photography in the world. Exactly. It is. It's a, it's an amazing, um, uh, it's an amazing collection. He is primarily focused on 20th century into the contemporary moment. So, um, the I believe the earliest works in the collection are from around 1910 up mm -hmm. through um, con the contemporary moment. And what are the, I, I mean, so if you are such a collector and if you don't really need money, why, why are you selling uh, good photos? You know, it's, um, it's, it's a, a question that in a way everyone has to confront at some point in their life. So the impetus behind this auction is that he uh, he has sold his home in Atlanta, which he bought in 1991, um, and it was a it was a condo um, in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. That over the years he added onto it, and and it grew to be I think over 13,000 square feet, and sort of filled Florida ceilings with all sorts of things, art, photography, books, collectibles. Um, and Atlanta was the home that he went to. Um, it was, a, it was, uh, it's in the South. He loved the sort of Southern hospitality. It was when he was touring across the United States. And he's talked about the fact that if he was performing uh, anywhere east of the Mississippi, he would uh, fly home. He liked to be able to fly home and sleep in his own in his own bed, so he would come to Atlanta, um, and it was uh, it was also the place where he went to get clean and sober. So Atlanta was was a place that was a, a, an extremely important part of his um, of his uh, just the last thirty years of his life. But he's no longer touring, and uh, given that this is not his only home, he he has homes in Los Angeles and London and elsewhere. Um, they South decided. He, what's that? South of France, exactly. He decided to to sell the house, and therefore uh, he didn't want to put everything into storage, which you know makes sense. So um, he talks very eloquently about the fact that these are not um, these are not like leftovers or things that he doesn't want. These are things that he's loved and he's lived with and. They've been on the walls, um, and he just doesn't want to see them go into storage. So he's he's offering them um, for a new round of collectors to enjoy. But most of the collectors of photography don't put the, the photos on the wall because it's a very fragile thing, right? But it, lo it looks like he's hanging the photos. Yeah, and there's a lot of ways you can mitigate that, but... Um, you know, the apartment was big and he had photographs on every like square inch of the apartment and in areas where things were not in direct sunlight and um, and that. But you're right. I mean, there's a lot of uh, he loved he loves living with things um, and that aspect of like being inspired by the objects around you. It, it wasn't purely about just having things um, tucked away in a storage unit. It was very much about living with them and being inspired. Yeah, but uh, the modern the modern photos, the black and white from beginning of twentieth century, are super fragile. Huh? Yes and no. I mean, black and white photographs look. Photographs are definitely fragile, but 
at the same time, they are quite, they have a robustness. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think you can fault him for living with them on the wall. <laughs> no, for sure. And uh, so what he, what does this, uh, how can he decide what he keeps in his treasure and what, what, what he is selling in the real big treasure? I can't I can't tell you what his internal uh, thought process was, but I can tell you that we have some amazing gems. It's to our benefit to be able to see these things and for someone to be able to live with many of them. I mean, when it comes to early 20th century works, there's pieces by a uh, beautiful little uh, photograph of the shadows of the Eiffel Tower by L. Lizitsky. There's, um, I think that's 1927 or 28. There's some beautiful André Kertéz photographs. Uh, there's Alfred Stieglitz. There's Edward Weston. Um, you know, what Lewis. What is Hine. the biggest estimate of the sale? We well, there's the sale extends beyond just photography, right? Yeah, so yeah, there's... but we speak of photography with you, right? Yeah. So there's a there's an Andres Gursky um, of the Christian Dior. Uh, Ohm store, which is like sunglasses and, uh, you know, it's one of the storefronts of the, uh, with the shelves and the objects uh, that I believe is 300 to 500,000. There's a Cindy Sherman, um, one of her large untitleds um, that's 300 to 500,000. There's also um, a gorgeous oversized uh, Helmut Newton, which is from the, um, uh, it's the tied up torso, which was made in the south of France. Speaking of the south of France, um, in Monaco, no? I, I'm not sure it was in Monaco actually, but it's oh, um, because uh, he was living in Monaco. Yes, exactly. Um, but that one carries an estimate of two hundred to three hundred thousand. We have some beautiful Irving Penn and Richard Avedon and Herb Ritz and uh, Robert Man Ray, for example, Man, Man Ray. We have there's there's no Man Ray in this sale, but he collects Man Ray. Absolutely, yeah, he has so he some keeps amazing. The Man Ray. Man. He's keep yeah again he has you know as you said seven eight thousand photographs. We're selling three hundred and sixty, so we're selling a a small portion of them. And again, many of these are photographers that he has in depth. So he has one of the world's greatest Irving Penn collections, and I think we're selling maybe four or five of them, but he has, you know, dozens of them. And um, so it's a chance, like I said, it's a chance to really um, see how he collected and also have a chance to own some really amazing things. And uh, what about the estimate? How, how do you deal with the estimate when it's a famous, when it's a celebrity like that? Do you take care of do you, the do way you care we of yeah, the way we approach estimating is to is to um, an estimate gives a relative value. So you have a a a, a low and a high, um, and and that's meant to indicate the relative value of an object. And often that is related to what we might know the a retail asking price to be, or it's related to our knowledge of how these works have sold in the past. What we talk about as market comparables. Um, but the thing with an auction is that there's a floor and then there's really no ceiling, right? People can continue to bid. And often in a celebrity situation, people will um, will continue to bid because they're excited about the, 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 the history of who owned this piece. And obviously saying that you owned uh, you own this Herb Ritz or this Richard Avedon that was owned by Elton John is an important um, distinction. For sure. And that, that applies to the watches and the sunglasses. And we're selling his piano that sat in his home in his living room in um, in Atlanta, uh, which is where he composed Billy Elliot, the, the musical and Aida. So even things like that, it's a it's a regular piano, but it was owned and played by Elton John. And where is he going? He's supposed to live in England. He has a home in England. He wants to spend more time with his family, with his two boys. Where? And... But where in England? You know? uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know where he's going to spend his time, but he has homes in England. I can't give you an address. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want an address. I'm just curious about what part of England. And 
Uh, but I'm curious about another matter, which is technically, does it know things? Because photography is a very technical field. Technical. Yeah. So does it yeah. know prints, kind of prints, late prints, early? Oh, prints? yeah, absolutely. So, you? So Elton very, very famously, you know, there's been some interviews with him, but also um, uh, the woman who he worked with when he was in Atlanta was this photography dealer. Her name was Jane Jackson. And she um, talked about the fact that he would devour books. Like she would start bringing him books on any photographer that caught his interest and he would just devour them and become very knowledgeable about the subject matter. So he's quite um, sophisticated in his knowledge of the history of photography. And with that, you can't escape the history of the techniques and the materials and the understanding of what's a later print and a early print and um, the idea of, you know, of a platinum print or a photogravure or the difference between that and a gelatin silver print or, you know, all of these different uh, types of techniques. So, yeah, so he's he's he is more um, in a way more knowledgeable than you might imagine a rock star to be. But exactly. at the same time, he's been collecting for 30 years and it's um, and you would expect him to know what he's talking about at this point. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and what is the, the photo which illustrates the most this idea of knowledge for you in the sale? Well, there's an amazing um, Richard Avedon that is a picture of Dovima with elephants okay. from the famous Harper's Bazaar shoot from 1955, but it's a variant. And it's a it's a different, she's wearing a different dress. She's wearing a white dress, not a black one. And it, she's still there in front of the elephants, but the photograph is composed um, horizontally as opposed to vertically. And this is the print where it's a contact print of the negative, which was an eight by 10 inch camera. So the contact print is roughly this size and it's mounted onto a board that has all of the markings made by Avedon because it was the, the print with the markings that he sent along with all the others to Harper's Bazaar. They were called the engravers copies. And these have on the back of it, it has the hand typed caption that went in Harper's Bazaar and it has all of the dimensions for reproduction and all of these notes. Um, and it's very, it's a, it's a completely unique object. But and it's the just, press, press print in fact. Sort of, but these have been become very collectible. And in fact, the the board itself is really wonderful. There was an there was a book published called Made in France, and it had um and it was a show of all of these um sort of engravers copies that were uh that were created. Here I'm just looking through the catalog to see if I can find. Um, and did you insist to have this photo, or did it give it to you naturally? It was um. It was definitely one of the ones that we insisted on, but everything was with his willingness. Well, for sure. <laughs> there's a, there's a, an exhibition of photos of Avedon now in Paris, you know, at Gagosian? Yeah, at Gagosian, exactly. Here, I'm going to show you. It's it's right here, this this image. We oh, I don't see know how to make it. Blurred. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it because of the background. Yeah, but, but I, will, uh, I will find it. You'll find it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So that's very technique, huh? Yeah, it's a very, it's a wonderful sort of technical piece that you, when, when you understand its history and why it was made, it makes it, um, it makes it quite rare and special. And, and uh, it's more expensive than the regular one? Well, so this, this image was never really printed and released as an additioned object. So you can't really, there's maybe two or three prints of this image, but this is the most unique because it was the one used for the magazine. So the estimate on this is one hundred thousand dollars low, one to one fifty. And where did you find it? Uh, the 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 actual provenance of this piece, you know, it was it was sold to him um, through a gallerist in Atlanta, Fay Gold. But you know, the way the the way the um, the way a lot of the dealers would work when it comes to clients is 
they would call each other and try to find things. So um, it was sold to him by Faye Gold, but um, where she got it, I don't know exactly. But it's... But, uh, it's... Oh, sorry. No, there, go ahead. Is there a microclimate -clim of photography collection in Atlanta or what? <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, I mean, look, there's great photography dealers all around the world in great in cities. And they are, you know, it's it's if I have a client that's asking me for something, I might call it a great another dealer that I know might have it and see if if he's willing to sell it, you know. So there's a there's a bit of sourcing going on. But yeah. um uh that's the um because also he organized at uh, Jeffrey Frankel, he curated the show recently. Yeah. yeah. So he you knows everyone in this field, right? Yeah. Yeah. The photography world is relatively small. And, and you think he's going to make a donation to uh, Victoria and Albert Museum? I have no idea. That's, that's um, between him and the museum. Because, but, uh, but I believe that there was already an announcement of there was an endowment to the uh, museum that was announced. I think you can look that up. Um, okay. Some some funds uh, were promised. I didn't know, but because it was surprising that the the collection, but part of the collection was shown at Tate, and Tate is very poor in terms of photography, right? They have. I mean, they're not this. They they don't have a collection like the V and A. Let's put it that way. They have a they have some they have great works though for sure. Um, yeah, there was a like you can you can look and see that Elton and David Furnish made a major donation um, to the VNA Photography Center in 2019. Ah, okay. So one of the galleries is named after them. Okay, but a donation in money, not in photo. Correct. That was a donation in in funds exactly. And more generally, how how does it go in this tormented art market now? How does it go for photos? Um, well, the photo market is is quite big, actually. You know, it ranges from um, all sorts of uh, rel you know, there's a lot of auction houses now that offer photographs, dedicated sales. You know, in America, we have you know Bonhams and Heritage and and uh, the reg, you know, Sotheby's and and Christie's, of course, offer photographs auctions. But also in Germany and France, there's a there's a large market that's trading and dealing in photography at the upper sort of end of the spectrum, which is where we've been uh, we've positioned ourselves. We've actually had a an amazing sort of run of um, masterpiece photographs from the history that have sold for record prices. Here at Christie's, um, recently, yeah, in like the last, absolutely, in the last uh, five years, every season we're. No, but if we're... we speak about last year, yeah, what did happen? Well, for instance, uh, we sold the Man Ray Le Violon Dangre for twelve point four million dollars, which was, was the like multi... two years ago, no? It was a year and a half, if you want to be uh, exact about it. That um, but recently, there's a big stress about what's going on in the world and the impact it could have on the art market. Yes. I don't have a crystal ball, so what, what can I say? I mean, <laughs> the stock no, market is going to well. What you have observed recently? I mean, the, the, you know, there's, there's no way to think of it in a monolithic way, is what I would say. So there's... Um, we continue to have great sales. We continue to find wonderful collections like Elton. Um, we have some collections coming up in the fall, which are not announced yet. Um, we have some more masterpiece works that are coming. Last year, we sold a Deanne Arbus for a million dollars. That was about um, one less than a year ago now, 10 months. We sold a William Eggleston for a million dollars. Um, so there there continues to be interest at the at the top end. There's a lot of, you know, everybody, the dealer, lots of people like to say, oh, the market is shifting. You know, the reality is, is like waves on the ocean. There's always some up, some down. You know, there's big collections come onto the market and make a big splash. And then the next year, there may not, may not be the same kind of large collection. And so it's a different moment. Um, 
it's it's uh there are larger macroeconomic things that are happening there are two major wars that are going yeah. on that people are you and know we, so we can't ignore that right but for example yeah. for the andreas gurski that's a long yeah. time for a while he was extremely fashionable i remember the prada show uh, yeah. window yeah uh, record prices I, it was like 15 years ago yeah so and, and, yeah. and so could it be a comeback of gurski that i don't know if it will be a comeback but you know the reality of the the art world and what is collected goes through trends and fashions as well so you know the there was a moment when gurski and thomas struth and sugimoto they had very very high prices their their prices have come down from that so you could say well their market has fallen but they're still selling strong on the primary market um yes there are there are there are shifts but that's you know it's hard to say that it, with any kind of certainty about what's going to happen i don't know what's going to happen but, but... there were there were recently on the primary market a tr big transaction for gurski well he's he sells with gagosian and and the works are always at various art fairs so they wouldn't bring it if it wasn't selling but i mean i don't i don't work for the primary market so i don't know exa exactly but yes there's he continues to be a selling artist that is shown at fairs and in in the galleries. Bon, merci beaucoup. Thanks a lot. You're welcome.